uh, training. Let's see, I, I, this, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything, so I'm reading some notes here. Okay. Training. It says here you have the right to get training from your employees on everything that's health and safety related, right? You want to make sure you have training on all equipment you want to operate. Um, you want to make sure you have training on the right way to use a saw, the right way to use a hammer, and the right way to take logs, but you also want to get training on anything that can affect your health and safety. What type of chemicals they have, what type of you know, dock standards that they have. You want to make sure that you can, um, that you know where you need to go to research something if you find an issue that you're not comfortable with. So uh, they need to make all their company rules, regulations, all their uh, procedures, everything that they have that they follow should be available to you, okay? And OSHA is one of those things that is available to you. Any, any of their OSHA findings and records that if they've had OSHA hits from before that you want to research, that all is, should be available to you, okay? So um, you also have the right to, to get training from employers on a variety of health and safety hazards and standards that the employees must follow. They have to do that. So you have to get training on, I mean, if you've never run a saw before, you want to know how to do it before you jump in there, right? Okay, well, same thing goes with the company. If you hire into that company, you want to know all the hazards that go along with working there. You know, if, if this bottle's out and it's got this red, white, yellow, and blue square on it, you want to know that there's data available for you to find out what that is and, and the hazards that go with it. So, um, other training. Some places don't have all these, but lockout, tagout. You got to make sure you know company procedures. They change from company to company. Now at the site, we had an 89-page procedure. Here we have seven. American Falls had one. Okay, so they're going to vary. Make sure you're familiar with that. Um, all the other stuff: bloodborne pathogens, noise, confined space, fall hazards, PPE. I mean, anything that is new to you, make sure you get training on, and they have to provide that. Okay, OSHA makes them provide training on stuff. That, that you have to use in your workplace. Uh, which way did I go? If I click this, does it work? All right. Um, medical records. Like we just talked about this, but make sure that your medical record, anything you feel you're exposed to, you, you can go and check your medical record. And if it's not in there, go to your boss first and say, hey, look, I had asbestos exposure, we had, and get documentation on anything you can, and just make sure it gets entered. And don't let them, you know, if you have to go to HR and say, this isn't in my records, or if, if your company is big enough to have its own medical, make sure it gets in your records that you had this exposure, okay? Here's one that people don't think much about is physical stress, okay? If you've been exposed to cold too long and got a little bit, or, or heat like I was, repetitive motion, any of these kind of things, make sure you follow up with them and get them in your records. If you need to file a complaint with OSHA, remember we, the, the website, there's an online page, you can file that. Your company has to provide you with forms if you want to file a complaint and you don't care that they know you're filing a complaint, they have to get you the forms, um, but you can print them out you know, online. If you want to, you can fill this out and put a block there there's a block on the complaint. You guys all should have the complaint form. We'll, we'll look at them in a minute. We'll just we'll, we'll cover this when we go over them. But you don't have to have your employer know who it is. Like someone said yesterday, they might be able to figure it out. But you know, <laughs> if you're going to file a complaint, then you probably should be willing to stand up and, and back it up. Okay. And you also, like it says here, you also have to find out a result of the complaint. You know what OSHA did to take care of it. And if there is nothing done, then you can find out why nothing was done, whether OSHA deemed it not necessary or, or whatever. An OSHA inspection. Anytime OSHA comes out for an inspection, you have the right to participate in that inspection. Okay? It says here an employer representative can accompany the OSHA inspector. The OSHA inspector cannot tell you you can't be there. Okay? Can't tell you. Okay? Um, if you want to, the inspector's there, and you want to walk up and talk to the inspector away from your boss, they can't tell you no. So if you, the OSHA guy's out there and he's doing inspection and there's some things you think he might want to see, 
you can go talk to them, and, and your employer can't tell you you can't talk to them. Okay? The OSHA guy can't tell you I can't talk to them. Okay? Um, anything that comes through an OSHA inspection, actually, most companies that get an OSHA inspection that are reputable companies, they will point out their mistakes to the OSHA guy. They'll point out their faults and stuff because the OSHA guy might say, okay, uh, you, here's my card, you send me a report, the documentation that it's done, and I won't write this thing up for you. So if you're up front with OSHA guys, sometimes they will not make it an official report so that it doesn't go against your company. They figure if you're willing to be up front with the problem, then they're willing to give you a chance. OSHA guys, um, I only met one OSHA inspector, and he was a decent guy, and you know he was that kind of guy. If you said, hey, you know, we got this wired, it, this is why it's done like this. It was kind of an emergency thing. You know, we know it's it's a violation, but we've got the parts ordered. We're going to get it. You know, as soon as it comes in, he'll say, sure, just send me a thing when it's done. You know. And it also depends on how many complaints they get. Too. Well, yeah. If if uh, if every one of you guys in here go and complain about any, you know, everybody, half the employees go and write complaints. I guarantee you, something will get done. You know, and, and but. <clears throat> If you're a reputable company, you won't have those complaints because you'll address them. But, you know, OSHA can shut your business down. They can write you enough fines and stuff to make it hurt. We'll get into fines here in a little bit. Um, here's the free from retaliation. You guys have a, a sheet. You should have a fact sheet in front of you. I think it's the fourth one we're going to go over here in a minute. Um, if you turn in a complaint to OSHA, if you file a complaint, Okay, it says here, you have the right to be free from retaliation for exercising safety and health rights. Okay, so if you complain about something dealing with their safety and health of you or your fellow co-workers, um, OSHA says companies can't come back and penalize you for that. But like Eric said, there's other ways around. Okay, without fear of punishment, Section 11C of the OSHA Act. Okay, Section 11C of the OSHA Act is what, where it states that they can't come back and do any repercussions if you file a, file a complaint. Okay, here's, here's the last bullet. If you think your company is persecuting you for a complaint you filled out, you have 30 days to contact OSHA if you think they're not treating you fairly. And OSHA will follow up on those complaints. Okay, now, you could possibly get fired. Uh, I don't know that they'd get you your job back, but they could penalize the employer. So, but 30 days from the time you feel like you're being punished. Okay, there's the fact sheet. Should be your handout number four. Some of my, some of my things aren't pulling up right. So, you guys should all have your fact sheet. Let's see if this works. Apparently not. So let me get a fact sheet. Your rights as a whistleblower. Okay. Um, this talks about laws enforced by OSHA. You can read through those. Um, gives you a list of unfavorable personal actions. How to file a complaint. It gives you OSHA offices. Our closest one is, looks like, what would it be, Denver or San Francisco? Seattle. Yeah, so, I mean, it has, uh, you could probably look on OSHA. I, there's, there's a map on OSHA. It probably tells you. Actually, you might be in, I think we're in Seattle. So whoever said Seattle is probably right. I think we're in the northwest region, so that would be Seattle. Um, it gives you a list here on the back. This is what I want you guys to look at. Okay, how OSHA determines whether retaliation took place. So this is what, if you, if you fill out a complaint and your boss, and you think your boss is retaliating against you, see if it fills in those criteria on the back. And that's, you know, if, if it meets those criteria, then, then you should go ahead and contact OSHA and report. And then it talks about all the whistleblower concerns and all the other stuff. So that's for you guys to read if, if you ever need it. Okay. Number five, refusing to work for conditions. This is kind of along the same lines, uh, the next handout. Um, it didn't come out real well. 
Uh, I printed out a better one, but I think you can still read it. Okay, if you get told to do a job, and you say, hey boss, that's not safe, and the guy says, do it or find another job, okay? If you truly think it's not safe, then here's a list of things that if, if that's the situation, then you have the right to, uh, you know, to not do work and the guy can't fire you for it. So, I don't know why this thing is not coming up, but this is hard to read. It says, your right to refuse to do a task is protected if all of the following conditions are met. Where possible, you ask the employer to eliminate, eliminate the danger and the employer failed to do so. So if you got to climb on a ladder and the ladders, the bolts are coming loose on the ladder, tell him about it. If he doesn't fix it, and you, ref you refuse to work in good faith, okay? And that means that you've talked to the guy, you've explained your point about why you think it's unsafe and that you, your true concerns for climbing up there, okay? Um, the, the next one, it's an and. A reasonable person would agree that there's a real danger of death or serious injury and there isn't enough time due to the urgency of the hazard to get it corrected through regular enforcement channels such as requesting an OSHA inspection. So those four things have to be there. So there's a lot of lawyer talk in there too. So, you know, it's... Uh, you have the right not to do work if it's if it's truly unsafe, but then you have to meet these requirements. And then it tells you what to do if, if those things aren't met. Okay, so there's handout five for you. Okay, here's some review. Now these review, make sure you know them because you got 12 question tests coming up here shortly. Okay, so what does an MSDS tell you? All right, somebody, somebody, raise your, they're going to have to raise their hand because I can't hear too many guys talking. Somebody tell me something, give me some list of things the MSDS tells you. Go ahead, Albert. Who Hazards, how to handle it safely. Um, okay, good. So, what are some worker rights?